Hey guys, so today we're going to be playing with Docker containers. We're going to run a node application in a Docker container, which has a dependency on MongoDB. So we're going to run MongoDB in another Docker container, and these containers are going to be able to talk to each other. So I have a simple node application here, which serves a UI. And if you want to use the same UI as me, you're going to want to head over to this project, which was a previous video on end-to-end -end testing and you want to copy the two files inside this public directory inside your public directory here in your node application and this is what's going to be served so now that we have that um, we can install our dependencies that we need so we're going to need to use body parser express nodemon and mongoose Now that they're installed, we can start our node app by saying npm start. And this is running this server file, which is really simple. It just serves our assets in the public directory. So it serves this HTML file. And it's listening on port 5000, as you can see. So if we go to port 5000, we can see that this simple UI is served to us. And this is a to-do application. Um, and we can create to-dos, but now as we have a dependency on MongoDB and we don't have MongoDB running anywhere, we don't have any persistent storage. So any to-dos that I create should be being stored and displayed down here, but because we have no storage, this isn't working. So that's what we're going to do today, and we're going to have it all running inside Docker containers. So the first thing we want to do is be able to run this node application inside its own Docker container. So to do that, we need a Docker file. So let's stop our app and let's create that Docker file. And the naming is important. It's just called Docker file with a capital D and no suffix, so nothing after. And inside this file, the first thing we want to do is define our base image. So we're going to use a node image and we have to define our work directory. And this is just saying inside the Docker container, where are we going to be working inside? So we're going to say user source app. And this is where our application is going to live. Next, we need to copy our package.json file, which is this file. And we want to copy it inside the container, just here at this level. So this would look like this. That's where that file is going to be. So once we've copied that, we can install our dependencies. So we can say run npm install. And then we want to copy everything else over. So we want to copy all of these other files over as well. And we want to expose a port. And the port we're exposing is 5000, because that's the port our application is running on. And then our start command, we're just going to say run node server.js. So we're just running our node server. So this should give us the same functionality as just typing npm start in the command line. So to test this, we need to say docker build. I'm going to give it a tag of docker node mongo. And we're building in the current directory. And this tag is just like an identifier for our image. In our docker run command, we need to say that port 5000 inside the container is mapped to port 5000 on our machine. So we use this dash p and then our port mappings. If we run that now, this should work. Yeah, so now we have the same functionality we had before, except our application is running inside a Docker container. So let's try to take this to the next step. So we have a dependency on Mongo. So let's try to solve this dependency. And the first thing we're going to do is inside our project here, we're going to create a new file called docker-compose.yaml. And inside this file, we can basically define more than one service which can run. So this is exactly what we need. We need to run MongoDB and we need to run our node application. So the first thing we need to do inside this docker compose is we need to define a version. And this is just the version of the file we want to use. And then we're going to define our services. So 
first service we're going to have is a web service. And we need to set what image to use for this service. And the image we want to use for this service is basically the image that we created here, which is just our web. And the build command doesn't take any parameters, so we can just put a dot. And we need the start command, which is node server.js. And we need to map our ports the same as when we were running it. So we're mapping 5,000 to 5,000. And this depends on which again is a list, depends on another service called Mongo. So this basically means that this service isn't going to start until this other service, Mongo, is running. And to find the Mongo service at the same level as web, so our second service, we just need to say Mongo. We're going to use an image, which is going to be Mongo. And by the way, we can search images by saying docker search Mongo. And this is going to find images on Docker Hub with the name Mongo. And we can see this first one is the one we're using. And it's the official Mongo image. So that's the image we're using. And again, we need to map our ports. So Mongo usually runs on port 27017. And you would find this all on their documentation. So we're mapping that port as well. So now that that's done, we have our Docker Compose file, which defines two services, our web service and our Mongo service. So now that we have this, how do we run it? So to do that, we use docker compose command. And first of all, we need to build it. The same as we used docker build before, we're going to build this compose file. So now that the docker compose build is finished, we use the command docker compose up. And this should start our two services. So you can see, first of all, the Mongo service started. And it's all running now. And we have logs from the Mongo container and from our application container. And if we go to the browser, hit refresh, you can see it's here. And nothing is actually going to be stored yet because we haven't wrote the code yet to actually store our to-dos. Um, something else that's interesting here, we can actually see our running Docker containers by using Docker PS. And we can see we have our own image running as a container, which started 27 seconds ago. And we have the Mongo image run as a container, and it started before 37 seconds ago. And you can see other useful information like our port mappings. So that's really cool. We have these two services running in their own independent containers, but they can talk to each other over the local host because we've mapped these ports. So what do we need to do next? We need to write the code so that whenever a to-do item is posted, we're actually storing it in our database. So we talked before about this front end UI. So it has some simple handlers that whenever you do different things, whenever you load the page, it'll get the to do's. You can create to do's and you can mark to do as done. So this is basically doing posts, patches and gets to our API. So now we just need to build out that API. The first thing we need to do is create our schema for our to do items. So let's just stop our services for now. Let's create a file called to do model .js. And this is where we're going to put our model for the to do items. So let's make this a bit bigger. And we're going to first of all import mongoose. And next we're going to define our schema. Let's give it a capital letter. We're creating a new mongoose schema. And we're going to have two fields, just text, which is type string. And we're going to say it's required. And our second field is just going to be done, which is going to be type 
boolean and it's not going to be required and the default is going to be false so now we can create our to do model I'm just going to call it to do and we're using this to do schema and this is what we want to export and let's export it inside an object cool so now we need to use this model inside our server file so let's import all of the database stuff down here so first of all we need mongoose again require mongoose now we need our to-do model, which we just created. And it's in to-do model. And it's to-do because we export it in an object. And the next thing we need is our database URI. So let's just call it DB URI. And this is the URI of where our database is running and this is just mongodb convention it's called mongo mongo and now we need to put our port which we said was 27017 this is the same as in our docker composed we define this port so let's just copy and paste it to be sure and we need to create our document so it's just going to be called to do app cool so now we're ready to connect to this database we can say mongoose.connect and we're connecting to the DB URI and we don't want to allow users to visit our page until this is all started so let's put this inside here cool let's just run our app now to make sure that everything's working okay and all that we actually have left to do now is write our handlers for the API we're going to have three handlers, get, post, and patch. So that's not going to be too difficult. Let's use our command we used before, docker compose build. So every time you make changes, you will have to build them again because it will have to rebuild this image. It doesn't have to rebuild the Mongo image because it's just getting the image directly from Docker Hub. So that's been built now. Let's start and we shouldn't see any change now, but we just want to make sure there's no errors in the logs. We should actually be possibly getting a few more logs now about connection. And we just have some warnings about some deprecation things with MongoDB. So that's okay, we don't need to worry about that for now. So now let's write our API handlers again in server.js. We'll start off with the get. So whenever someone does a get on to do, we're going to get a request, we're going to send a response. So when they do a get, we need to find all the to do's. So we're using our model to find the to do's. And we just want to find them all, so we don't need to enter any query or anything inside here. So whenever we find them, then we're going to get the to do's, we're going to say res.status 200 success. And we're going to send back the to do's which we just found. And let's catch any errors that happen. Let's say res.status. Let's send back a 400 with the error. Cool. So that's our get handler finished. The next one we'll do is post, and we should be able to test them then by creating to do's and then getting them again. So this time app.post to do we're going to get the body and the body is going to be inside request so request.body we're going to get the to do and create a new to do from that we need to pass in text which is going to be body.text and then we need to save that to do to do.save to do and 
and once that's saved, then we want to send back a response. So we want to say 201 for created, and let's send back our saved to do, which we're going to change here. And the same thing if we catch an error, we're just going to send that back. Cool. So if we have any luck, this should work now to create and get to do's. Let's build it up again. And this is the first time we're actually going to know if our application is connecting to MongoDB successfully, as we're going to have some sort of persistent storage. As whenever we're getting and posting to do's, we're saving these and it should be persistent. So let's start it up and see how we get on. Uh, looks like we have some sort of uh, error here. We're missing a bracket here at the end of the then on both of these. So we're just missing that. So I actually noticed two other small bugs here. So the DB URI, this should be mongodb colon forward slash forward slash mongo the port and our document name. So I was missing out the DB here. And also here where we're saving our to do item. This to do should be camel case because it's the to do we created here. So let's change that. And let's bring it up, build it, and bring it up and see if this works. So now going back to the browser, refreshing. Let's try to create our to do. Create. And you can see it worked. So we created the to do. The last thing we need to do now is handle the patch that happens when this done button is clicked because at the minute nothing's happening. So that's cool. Let's stop our server or stop our services I should say and let's do this patch. So app.patch let's actually copy the post change it to patch and it's to do and we need to get the ID from the URL and to do that, we're going to say <coughs> const id equals request.parameters. And now we need to find one and update. We need to find the one that has this id. So inside here, id, and this is just something that Mongo adds. It's its own unique id. And once that's done, we're adding the payload that this to-do item is done. And whenever that's done, we can use this thing. So we just say to-do, and we're that as 200, and we'll send back the to-do, even though the user isn't going to use it. Uh, we'll send it back. Cool. So let's save this. And hopefully this works. So you have built our Docker services and now we're going to bring them up. So if I refresh the page, we still have this bring out bins. It persisted from last time and we should now be able to mark it done and we can. We can create these other to do's and mark them done. So that means we have persistent storage. So in this video, we created our node application, ran it in a Docker container, and then we used Docker Compose to run two services, our node app that we created, and also a MongoDB service, and those two services were able to talk to each other. And it's a really nice development environment because we don't need to have Mongo running on our local machine, it's just running inside the Docker container. Hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments. And